Our second speaker of uh, today is uh, Ling Fang Sang. Uh, Ling Fang uh, received his PhD from Princeton University in uh, 2020. I would say he has made uh, most, if not all, of the foundational work on uh, deep modeling for molecular simulation that we will describe uh, throughout this workshop. Uh, Ling Fang has an extremely impressive uh, research uh, record uh, and I would say a very promising career. Uh, it is a pleasure to have, uh, uh, to have him uh, with us uh, today and well uh, we're looking forward to your lecture in fun okay thank you pablo uh, it's a great pleasure for me to uh introduce some of the recent progress and thoughts uh maybe from a viewpoint of a developer and uh, a developer of uh, methodology and also software after two years graduation from princeton which i missed a lot uh, so <clears throat> today my topic is about um, deep potential at scale. So um, actually scale is typically fo followed by complexity. So uh, uh, in, during the process of developing the methodology, what, what, what I realized is actually is it requires a joint development of both the, of model data and software, and actually as, also the community. So as the scale increases, the complexity is actually is becoming um, maybe if not a headache, it, 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 it's, it's becoming a challenge. So in this talk, I think from a viewpoint of developer, I would like to introduce to you the journey of the potential and um, some of the uh, <clears throat> current work in happening in the open source community and also some of future directions uh, in my view. Okay, let me start. In the first part, I will um, try to uh, uh, may, uh, review the journey of deep potential from these three directions, model data and software. So actually, I think in five years ago, uh, when <clears throat> uh, it, it's quite an amazing timing for the community that machine learning uh, is, um, is starting to solve a lot of uh, problems in scientific computing. And at that time, what we realized was that actually a systematic opportunity for machine learning is that we can use the um, expressive power of uh, deep neural networks and other tools brought by machine learning to bridge different scales in scientific computing. So we have length scales, time scales, and along with these scales, we have different models different physical models and different tools or theories uh, at different levels. So <clears throat> a systematic opportunity is that we can use machine learning to learn data at mi micro scale and then try to bridge the accuracy of micro scale models to a, a larger scale. So a, a typical story here is that we can use a deep potential model to uh, learn data <clears throat> generated by DFT and uh, more expensive uh, quantum chem chemistry models. And then uh, we can just perform molecular dynamic simulations uh, with the accuracy of the underlying uh, DFT models. And that's the hope. And actually that's, that has be become a very systematic uh, solution to the longstanding accuracy versus uh, efficiency problem in molecular simulation. And actually, that's the starting point. Uh, we realize <clears throat> that we realized such opportunities. And since then, uh, if we look at the things in the three dimensions, we have three. Uh, um, we have the software development and also data accumulation and also model. And let me just try to start from the model part. So, from from model, as Roberto has covered in the very beginning, what we realized was that we have to integrate the representative power of deep learning with what's required by the physical property. And here, the most essential physical property is the potential energy surface. And already uh, at that time, there ha had been a lot of works. We, we just realized that to put it, to make it really general and really end to end, in the sense that we don't need much uh, human intervention in the training process for complicated systems, we need some additional efforts. And that marks, marks the starting point of the development of deep potential. And in the very beginning, we have the 
uh, local frame version, uh, <clears throat> in which actually the <clears throat> key point we addressed uh, was how to um, represent the local chemical environment in a way that preserves symmetry, uh, translational, rotational, and permutational symmetries, and in the general way. But, but later what we realized was that the local frame version because of the sorting, sorting procedure uh, involved uh, the dependence of the thermal energy surface on the atomic, uh, on the position of the atoms uh, is not so smooth. So then we, we have this smooth version, which actually will be uh, the, I think will be uh, <clears throat> covered in detail in our tutorial uh, series. So <clears throat> that's the starting point. And what can be <clears throat> found here is that after this, these two boosts, we have a, like in these four years, actually we gradually, uh, gradually uh, developed several uh, modifications, but maybe minor modifications of the model. Although there have been a lot of constructions and uh, methodologies which takes different model architectures where uh, <clears throat> uh, have some modifications of the model. What we realized was <clears throat> that after this model architecture, what has to be done in a proper way is a good software that can really uh, help us uh, <clears throat> to, 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 to obtain a good model given whatever uh, data from a initial simulations. And that's actually the major effort after uh, the development of, of the methodology. And regarding the models, uh, then we, we started to do a lot of other extensions, just like what, what has been covered by Roberto, the cross wind procedure, we can use the same model architecture to uh, model the free energy of cross wind particles. And we can try to couple the model to uh, classical force fields and also extend to extend the methodology to deal with vector, vectorial or tensorial properties like polarization and plausibility. And uh, then later on, uh, and I think this will be covered by Professor Darren York, uh, in, it can be integrated in the QMM, QMMM procedure. And also for <clears throat> system where long range interaction uh, play a major role, we, 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 we build up this uh, deep potential long range model uh, <clears throat> and uh, based on the one year formalism. And also <clears throat> during the development of the model and and uh, the process in which uh, a lot of ex applications is actually um, uh, explored based on the model architecture, we also realized some problems of the original uh, re representation of the uh, model. And here we, we have a construction of the three body embedding in which we address a specific problem of the model representation that I will cover later. So that's the mo modifications of the model. And then what I want to <clears throat> cover uh, later is that actually now is the critical timing. So as the data accumulates, now we have a lot of data covering maybe even more than half of the uh, periodic table. And we have now accumulated a lot of data. And also we have like viewed, we, we have witnessed some later development of uh, AI in other areas like CV and NLP, in which we have some large scale pre trained models like GPT 3, which inspired us that if we have enough data, what if, whether we can just have a unified model, maybe pre trained to start with? If we have that model and data, maybe for new applications, we don't need to just start, start from scratch, start from generating. Uh, <clears throat> from scratch the model, uh, the uh, initial data and model, but we start from a good model and transfer or uh, uh, distill the model to a new, uh, fine tune the model to a new application. If that could be, could happen, I think that will be a new starting point from, uh, for the community. So I think now we are at the timing where this could become possible. And this is a project called, let me just call it DP pre-trained model. Uh, that I will introduce later. And also another project you can see it in the in GitHub is differentiable molecular force field, which deal with the issues that in which we realize that <clears throat> um, for systems involving organic uh, 
uh, molecules were were large were were were, were <clears throat> large bio-related molecules. Uh, typically, the input is not only atomic positions, atomic types, but also the topology uh, of how the atoms are connected with each other, how the local environment are <clears throat> um, are fixed. So this kind of information will be very important for such kind of systems. And but uh, but previously, if we start from scratch and cons consider only the symmetries and local complexity of the lo local environment, such prior knowledge cannot be used. So if we want to just incorporate such kind of prior knowledge, we need a new pr framework. Uh, and that's the, the development of, of the deep uh, DMFFF. So I, was, I would say like in the very beginning, it's just a construction of the single model, which is promising for a lot of different applications. And as the uh, development of the model proceeds, uh, we, 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 uh, we have uh, several modifications, but actually the modifications are more like application driven. So this is a journey of DP in terms of model development. And we have data part. <laughs> actually, the accumulation of data is associated with uh, several, maybe hundreds of applications using dependent kit to solve uh, problems in different areas. In the very beginning, what we have is that we already have some existing expensive DFD data, just like what's in the original papers of deep potentials. We actually have very expensive uh, data from uh, simulations of water at ambient con condition, uh, maybe treating, treated in, uh, at, high, at very um, <clears throat> expensive level. And that's the starting point. And what's, what can be uh, tested is that given such data, we, we can fit it and we can just then have a model that can replace the original uh, expensive calculator for such single situation. And then as uh, there, there, uh, as the number of applications in, increased, actually the accumulated, accumulated data is also <clears throat> increasing. So then people, have, then the, we, 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 we ha had to just uh, Think of think about the possibility whether we can just general uh, generate a, maybe a gen, general purpose model uh, for specific applications like alloys or the phase di diagram of water. So then, in that case, what we need is a tool like DP generator, and which give which gives us the possibility to generate systematically the minimum set of training data and the resultant reliable model. So that's what's happening for data. And then as the data accumulates, we, we, we have now several uh, models uh, covering part of the periodic table and also the associated uh, training data set. That's what's happening for data. And then uh, also like what as reported in this web page, there has been like more than hundreds of uh, papers using the, the software, uh, literally using DeepMD Kit to uh, investigate uh, uh, problems in different areas of science. So <clears throat> that's the data part and data is associated with applications. And, and then the most, I would say the most complicated part uh, is for the software development, which happens in the deep modeling community. In the very beginning, what we we just want what we we just wanted to do is actually to build up the model based on TensorFlow. As time at that time, it was like version zero dot ten, and to to do to base that on the, the model trained from the data, we integrate model with some other molecular dynamics engines like LAMPS. So that that was the starting point, and then we realized that we if we we want to generate data and model in a systematic way. We need this DP generator, which is essentially a complicated workflow. And as the complexity of DP generator in increased, we realized that, let's say, just for the generating of DFD data, we have different, uh, more than 10 different uh, commonly used uh, DFD software we need to integrate in this workflow. And that, uh, with that, actually uh, come, uh, come some complexity. And if, if we look at this picture uh, on the right, 
uh, before 2018, actually, what's, what was <clears throat> typically done was based on the PC that I was using at that time. Uh, and I just did, you know, maybe we just did it on PC for all this pro model production and model test, and then model inference, which is actually long time and uh, <clears throat> large scale molecular dynamics simulations based on DeepMD. And that, that's enough. And then start as the, in, as the scale, scale increased, actually from 2018 and 2022, what, what was developed was that we have this tool, DPGen and also cloud servers and other uh, open source tools for which we can just, using which we can just uh, use different uh, computing resources like PC cloud or HPC clusters to realize several goals like uh, model production, model test, and also uh, <clears throat> in machine learning it's called model inference, but just different kinds of molecular dynamics uh, simulations. Uh, for different applications. And that's what, what happened in the last four years. And then later on, what we realized was that actually here, the part, this part, DP generator is still not well structured. If we just increase the, <clears throat> as, we, as the application, the range of application and also the possibilities increase, actually what we realized that we need a good workflow uh, <clears throat> tool like like here, DeepFlow, to help us to talk to different kinds of machines and also to 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 build up different workflows. Because here, DP generator is a specific workflow, and if we want to just do it in a proper way, we need some better design, and that's what happening here. So then we can see that actually, as the uh, methodology become more and more popular. Uh, it's really a joint development of these four component, model, data, software, and also, as well as the community. So then we, <clears throat> we, we can think about two kinds of futures. One is that we have more and more complicated model architectures where some other models from other groups uh, become better and uh, started to replace the original construction of deep potential, which is possible. And we have more and more complicated simulation protocol because of the complexities. Or as a domain scientist, we just want to uh, scientists, we just want to have more and more efficient and useful tools. We just want to start from these tools to invest, investigate some certain scientific problems. Definitely, I, I, I think as a domain scientist, we, we, we want the latter. And also for new project, do we really want to just always start from generating model and data from scratch? Or if possible, if we have a new starting point, we can, for different kinds of projects or applications, we can start from the best starting point. I think these are problems left for the developers and uh, for which I want to just introduce in more detail. Okay, so then with this journey in mind, let's just have a quick look of the model construction. And I think half, half of this part has been covered by Roberto, so I will just um, try to uh, speed up. So important quantities as scales between quantum mechanics and molecular dynamics includes this potential energy surface, which is scalar, and also some vectorial and tensorial pro properties like polarization and plausibility. In the very beginning of the mass development of the methodology, what really matters is some key requirement from physics that we have to uh, follow. And by following that requirement, also by integrating the represent expressive power of neural network, we have the design of the model architecture. And this, this inc includes uh, the requirement of locality and symmetry. And also then we have uh, some general principles for, a, for the requirement for a reliable physics-based machine learning model, like accuracy, efficiency, locality, and some, some physical constraints. And with the physical constraint, uh, satisfied, we also need the model to be end-to-end -end where uh, <clears throat> we need to minimize a human intervention. In this way, we developed the original version of the deep potential and the popular version is the so-called uh, uh, the smooth version. I will not cover the uh, details, but I want to say that this is a proper way to for, deal with the <clears throat> symmetry requirements and also giving us the uh, uh, adaptivity and freedom to optimize the parameters in the descriptors. 
because in many applications of physics and chemistry, uh, physical and chemical problems, people start from some design of a fixed set of uh, descriptors. But uh, in some truly com complicated cases, actually, we need the descriptors to be trainable uh, so that you know, we can find the best set of descriptors for different cases. So that, I think, uh, is a, 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 an important contribution of the uh, original construction of the deep, uh, deep potential model. And then <clears throat> something new uh, is uh, start from the following. So uh, what we realized that is that actually the original construction will work generally fine for most of the cases, uh, we, which is encouraging. But in some certain cases, like here, the deep potential for a pure system tungsten, uh, if we consider the pairs barrier or point, point defect here, we can see that it's this plot and this uh, <clears throat> the, uh, this part means the smooth addition two body embedding, the original version, and this means the hybrid uh, part. We can see that this, the, the original uh, version of DP cannot differentiate the dumbbell, uh, this energy at different inter, uh, surfaces. And so they, they give the same prediction because actually constructively we can uh, give some proof that uh, this is uh, two body embedding where this original version uh, is not uh, expressive enough for some certain cases. And then <clears throat> with this three body construction, which actually more explicitly considers the angular dependent of uh, the local environment, uh, we can have this uh, much better prediction here. Now, I, I, I would like to, uh, to stress that actually uh, here, uh, uh, both the two-body embedding and three-body embedding actually uh, give us a many-body uh, construction of the, or dependence of the energy surface on the atomic environment. But here, the three-body embedding is definitely more expressive. Uh, and this evaluation of the, this property give us a good example. And also I would like to uh, stress is that actually with this three body embedding uh, as input, we have to, this part has to be uh, <clears throat> evaluated uh, with a complexity that goes with the square of the number of neighbors because we, we, we go through both the pairs of the uh, neighbors. So, uh, so this is more expensive. So in practice, well, uh, a, a suggestion would be like uh, if we can just uh, obtain a good potential use for, uh, useful enough with this two-body embedding, we just use it. And if it's not enough, we can try this three-body embedding. And that's some extension of the current uh, deep potential formulism. And then <clears throat> after all these constructions, what we realized is that actually for some uh, complicated systems, which involves many different uh, type of, uh, atomic types, and I, as I can remember, I, I, I noticed the work using the PEMD kit to perform simulations for a system uh, with uh, 10 different types of atoms. But in that case, in the original construction of the model, we can see that it requires, the, 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 the parameter actually depends the, the, uh, on the types of the two neighbors, J and uh, I and J here. So if we consider, um, di n different types, then actually in principle, we have n square types of pr uh, set of parameters uh, required for training. And that definitely is not affordable. And for cases like doping, if we, in 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 we just include a specific type, uh, a tiny fraction of a specific type, we need to train uh, a lot of, uh, <clears throat> we need to spend a lot, a lot of, uh, efforts for additional training because there are some new set of uh, parameters required for uh, <clears throat> for training and that's definitely what we don't want and then we started to think about how we just represent the different atomic types with some certain uh, parameters and then share the most of the other parameters uh, for in the model so in that case we have we, we need to just map different atomic types uh, to a, to a list of parameters we call type embedding. And with the type embedding, we, we, we use some, we need to just use some additional construction to 
make the model expressive enough and to, to be trans transferable among different uh, systems with a lot of different types of atoms. Uh, so that's actually the major effort in the last year uh, we, we, we took um, <clears throat> for model construction. And right now, uh, maybe I don't have enough time to cover the details of how the model uh, is constructed, but I, I would say that there are two essential parts. One is type embedding. And if we, but, but if we just use type embedding and integrate it, it with the original version of the model, uh, it doesn't work. And when we actually integrate the latest development of uh, AI, we use by using some attention maximum, actually uh, the, the model <clears throat> has become uh, good enough. And I will show you two examples. The first one is uh, for a system with three different types of uh, atom, aluminum, magnesium, and copper. And in the previous work, actually we generated potential that covers the full concentration space of these three different uh, <clears throat> elements. Uh, but that actually requires a lot of mm, data. And here, what we, uh, the, in this uh, experiment, we just use the pre-trained model to, to, to just pre-train it based on the single and binary element data sets. And then we see the learning efficiency of the model uh, and we perform active learning on tertiary uh, data set. And we can see here that for the standard deep potential model, even if we have model trained on single and binary element data sets, we still need a, a lot, large number of uh, ternary uh, snapshots to make it uh, predictive for, uh, for, 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 for ternary uh, systems. But here, if we use this attention deep potential model, uh, even if, with a very small number of added ternary samples, we can already reach a very good accuracy. And uh, the, the learning curve is definitely much lower than the previous version. And also, if we just pre-train the model with a very large uh, data set, here we use uh, open catalysis, OC20, uh, <clears throat> which covered like 56 elements. Uh, which definitely we cannot train using the original version for uh, uh, of deep potential. And we can see that after we have this pre-trained model, we compare three different cases, just start from uh, standard deep potential and uh, the attention deep potential from scratch and the attention deep potential pre-trained and uh, free, uh, <coughs> freeing the embedding parameters. And in these three cases, when tested on uh, like six component high entropy, high entropy alloy, we can see that the learning curve is like this. So <clears throat> the accuracy of the model actually increased very quickly if we just have this pre-trained attention DP. And it also goes very fast with the uh, attention DP. And for the standard DP, although we can still like reach a good accuracy given enough data, it, it, it's, it starts from very, um, bad starting for point and it, the required data to reach the same accuracy is actually around uh, one or more order of magnitude uh, more than the attention DP. And that shows uh, like uh, the transferability among different uh, atomic types and different uh, atomic environment using this attention DP or the pre-trained model. So that's the latest development of DP. Uh, and also, if we just want to look at the interpretability of the model, and this is a preliminary result, we can see that it, we can have some good explanation of the parameters embedded in the uh, <clears throat> in, in atoms. And uh, for the time uh, limitation, because of the limitation of time, I will just not go into details here. And more recently, we uh, for for truly um, expensive DFT calculations, we have thus uh, used another formula, the deep KS which is actually a deep machine learning based uh, diff density functional model uh, implemented on the uh, DFT software APCUS. And with this tool, we can just, uh, just generate a DFT, a machine learning based DFT model for specific systems uh, very efficiently and use this efficient model to generate model, more data to train machine learning potentials. And if you're interested, maybe you can go, this, go to this link. Okay, so that's the part for the, maybe the latest development of the model. Uh, maybe I don't have enough time to 
for more details, but I would say that uh, starting from like, like now, because of the accumulated, the, the size of the accumulated data is uh, become larger and larger, we, it's a good timing to think about how we develop a unified model for the whole periodic table. And I think that will be very an ex exciting um, <clears throat> event if you can realize in the future. Okay, then what's next? Uh, so as I have introduced, uh, this is the last topic. So uh, <clears throat> with the quick development of all this component data uh, model and also software. So from point of view of a domain scientist, it, it, it's really, a, it, it might be a headache. So when starting from an idea to results, and we have to think, how, is it becoming harder or easier if we just uh, want to do something? And actually this similar situation happened, uh, has happened in the machine learning community and which gave, gave rise to a, a new <clears throat> uh, thing called machine learning operations, which actually considers how to increase automation and improve the quality of production during the life cycle of uh, a machine learning based project. And actually based on this, I will not go into details of this, but maybe uh, what, what can be envisioned for DP is that after we have accumulated more and more data and more and model, we might have some, um, have to design some general purpose system. And uh, starting from the data, uh, more and more data, we generate some unified models and based on which we fine tune it to specific cases or distill or com compress for better uh, performance or transfer it to different uh, labels or we just have trained some customized models for uh, specific systems. And then we use it to different uh, applications. And if we can realize this, so uh, <clears throat> we can just develop this three part independently. And what, what's important is how the interface can, should be designed. And I, I would see that, I would say that if this can be developed in, independently, then the testing procedure will be very important because uh, we, we, the model could be changed, but it has to go through a strict testing uh, pipeline to guarantee that for some specific applications it's good enough. So actually the community is like, uh, <clears throat> maybe requires a, a good design of the model testing and model development and also task parts uh, for a better collective uh, development of this field. Um, so this, this is something that I, I would like to just uh, spend more effort on. And I, I would say that by only just having this system, we can just uh, different uh, people with different expert expertise can just really work on where they are interested in. Some uh, methodology developer, developer can, be fo can focus on uh, here in, with, with more time and also like domain experts can just uh, start from a better starting point to just investigate different scientific problems here. And uh, finally, uh, as we can realize that this will be a very uh, challenging task for the whole community, inc including people with very different backgrounds. So uh, I couldn't think, think, think of any solution if we want to realize uh, if, and if we don't consider this to do this in a way that is fully open source. So actually that, that's something that uh, that has become uh, a, a, a large e ecosystem, the deep modeling. So you know, I think with the effort from uh, different uh, people with different background and <clears throat> we, we can uh, put some join after here in the open source uh, community and uh, the, the, the field is still quickly developing and uh, I think we are heading towards this kind of uh, collective uh, system. Okay, uh, that's uh, all for my talk. Okay, thank you very much uh, Ling Fang for, uh, for an excellent talk. Uh, uh, you covered so many topics. Uh, I have many questions, but I will uh, give priority to, um, ah, there I can see you. <laughs> oh, I just realized I didn't. <laughs> okay, I didn't turn on the video. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. It's good to see you now. Um, okay. So uh, I have one question here by Tom that says, 
Do you foresee any applications of experimental data in the training proce processes, such as top-down corrections? Okay, that, that's a very good question. Actually, uh, methodology-wise, that's the purpose. I, I, I think um, we, 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 we need to just think about. Uh, that's, a, that's a possibility we need to think about. And I, I, I recently noticed the work from Professor Darren York, right? <laughs> By considering some experimental data. And actually, uh, what also, what, what, what realized that, um, here for such kind of possibility is that uh, we need a good system to, uh, to really make this a routine procedure. Uh, because for uh, using DeepMD, we can consider this, but that will need a lot of effort. Uh, that's why also we, we are currently working on a new project, DMFF, also in uh, open source on deep modeling, using which actually a major feature is, uh, is auto-grad, automatic uh, <clears throat> differentiation. And with this uh, feature, we can better just incorporate experimental data in our training procedure. And that's definitely possible, and, uh, but it's a matter of efficiency, how we implement uh, the methodology uh, in practice, in my view. Okay. Um, uh, there are at least uh, five other questions on, uh, on the Q&A uh, so, um, feature of Zoom. Link Frank, perhaps uh, can you go through them and uh, if you can uh, okay, okay, answer definitely. them? Okay, Because uh, I, sure. I mean, uh, I mean, if I have to enforce uh, timing, I, I, I <laughs> okay, okay, definitely to, to, the, to the next talk. Uh, thank you very much for a wonderful talk. Uh, it's really a pleasure having having you here.